Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to week two of our class of uh, marriage and family. I'd like to um, thank all of you for coming on time. Uh, also, welcome to all the e-learning students who have uh, logged, uh, who would be watching this uh, at a later point of time. I hope discussion and um, what we're learning in class is truly blessing you. all So, welcome everybody. Um, uh, I think we're yet to have a few more students to come, but I think we'll get uh, started. Okay, great. All right. So. We are on week two of our class, and uh, we're uh, looking at how uh, how we can establish a, a, a biblical foundation for marriage. And last week, we looked at um, uh, understanding marriage in the way God has designed it. So we looked at different pers biblical perspectives of what the Bible talks about marriage is and, and what God designed marriage to be. So uh, today we will, so, but maybe just before we get started, just a quick recap. So um, would, could you all kindly unmute and maybe share a few of the perspectives that we learned last week, some biblical perspectives that we learned last week. You can just quickly unmute, or if you want to use the chat, you could do that as well. Okay, we just need to call out some. Okay, God, God is the one who designed marriage. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, God is the designer of marriage. He's the one who solemnized the very first marriage between Adam and Eve. So he is the designer. Thank you. Right. What are the other perspectives? Okay, I think that's covered. God designed marriage. What are the other perspectives about marriage we learned about? It is a covenant. Okay, marriage is between one man and one woman. Woman. Thank you, Anthony. Anand says marriage is a covenant. Yes, it is a solemn covenant. It's a promise made as God being witness. Nikhil says marriage is a good thing. Yes, that's what God designed marriage to be for it to be a good thing. Okay, any one, one or two more? We learned, I think, around six or seven perspectives, right? Biblical perspectives. One or two more? Anybody else? It's being united as one. Yes, being united together as one flesh. We looked at different um, words that really relate to a man and being one flesh. We, we had spoken about companionship, agreement, unity, relationship, connection, all of that. Excellent. Wonderful. Marriage is an institution to be honored. Yes. Thank you, Nina. Great, wonderful. So just uh, glad that uh, all of you were paying attention or at least look through your notes to understand um, um, what, what the Bible talks about marriage. Now today we are going to be um, looking at chapter two. This is again another foundation of marriage that we want to really focus on. Um, and this entire chapter talks about how a couple, the two individuals who are joining together in marriage, um, an important task for them is to prepare themselves for marriage. So when we look at marriage, we know that there are two people. It is two people coming together and becoming one. And um, so, so when you're looking at a man and a woman coming together, um, you do see that the man and the woman have come from different uh, uh, different, maybe their own personalities, or they've had different experiences, their entire framework is very different um, when they walk into marriage, right? So they come from two different frameworks. And this could mean uh, so many things to them, the way that uh, uh, they see life, the way that their, their personal walk with God, or their personal experiences that they've gone through, their upbringing, their uh, personalities, their temperaments, all of this, uh, there are two different things that come. So when you are, when there are two people uniting together, 
uh, th there is a chance that it can become something uh, very united and uh, and and you know can progress into something really uh, really wonderful in God's eyes, uh, or it can it can also be something that creates a lot of pain because of the fact that two people come from different worlds and trying to join together as one. There is an opportunity of it being made beautiful, but there could be possibilities of it going the other way as well. So that's why it's so important that both individuals in the marriage needs to be well prepared, needs to be well equipped and ensure that when they come together, they make something um, good about the marriage, right? So that they can become one as scripture suggests, they can together become one. So often, very often we do see that people get into marriage for wrong reasons. Right? It could be because of the pressure of parents, or it could be a social um, expectation. Uh, it could be to eliminate, um, uh, you know, for someone to take care of the business, or it could be some kind of gain that they're getting out of money, or it could be sexual gratification. All of these are wrong reasons for get for for marriage, and that's what often can break or devastate a marriage. So. Uh, this this sense of preparation we want to take um uh the uh, you know an example of what actually happens in a jewish wedding uh, a jewish wedding um like like we said it's or it it portrays or it pictures the coming uh you know the the coming wedding of jesus and his and the church right and uh, uh, it's a custom that they could that they follow even in their marriages at, at this point of time so once the um, the arrangement of ma marriage has taken place between two families and there is the ceremony or the engagement or the betrothal ceremony that takes place. There is often a year waiting uh, for the wedding ceremony. So once the engagement or the betrothal takes place, there is one year of waiting before the marriage. Now, this waiting period is basically meant for two purposes. One, it is to prepare themselves, prepare. So how is the groom actually goes back and prepares a place for his bride, a place to stay, a, a, a home or a, a makes a, a dwelling place for the bride. Whereas the bride is making herself ready, is preparing herself. So the first purpose is a preparation. The second purpose that, that you, you'd see in a Jewish wedding is the testing so that one year period is a period of testing one for the bride to prove her devotion to the to the groom or or the fact that she is waiting for the groom in devotion and in purity whereas it's for the groom he demonstrates that uh, he's tested while he demonstrates the responsibility of making of or getting the place ready for the bride to come so it's a good lesson to learn, although, you know, we, we don't, we're not advocating the fact that, you know, we should follow these traditions. But nevertheless, we are taking the meat out of this, which means, you know, having a period of preparation is something that is highly recommended. So here at church, we often um, take a couple through a six month period of preparation where, uh, where, a, where a couple de desiring to be married and uh, having uh, the uh, the uh, the permission of their family members, we take them through uh, an entire six month period of preparation and uh, uh, taking them through these lessons and through important discussions, both biblical, spiritual, as well as practical uh, discussions on how to lead a family. So, and this is something that's that's extremely important and really recommended. Uh, for couples getting married. So even as we are addressing this, this chapter, we're going to be looking at seven important areas that really need to be addressed, um, and which is as part of preparation for anyone, for any couple who is preparing to get married. So we're going to look at seven important areas, and I hope to cover this in the next two hours. And, um, uh, you know, for, for those of you who who aren't married, the encouragement is to actually deeply look into these seven areas, have a quick insight and evaluation of yourselves, and uh, work towards improving some of those areas. And for thus, for some of us who are already married, it is to really align ourselves to, um, uh, to, to work 
towards uh, preparing ourselves and being the best for our spouse. Okay, so the first part uh, that we're going to be looking at is how do uh, uh, when you're preparing yourself, it is to become the best person or becoming the best you. Uh, often, you know, when we consider marriage or when we're thinking about marriage, uh, the focus is always finding Mr. Right or Miss Right. Who is that right person that we can find? Well, although that's important and that's what we're going to be looking at the chapter uh, next, it's important that we, we also pay attention to what we are bringing into marriage as a person. What part of preparation are we personally doing as we enter into marriage. So how uh, am I working on myself so that I can have, I can be a good partner or a good spouse to my future spouse or to my, or to the family or or to, uh, to, to the marriage in itself, okay? So the best thing that you can give um, into marriage is, is you yourself, is a, is a prepared version of you yourself. So, more than you know you, you would have probably heard of that you know when when you point one finger to someone else there are three pointing back to you so it's always best to look at yourself and and understand how you can prepare um, yourself okay now uh, remember uh, that that you know even as we're looking at this uh, at this parallel remember that uh, uh, you know jesus did die to to purchase us as his bride so that he would redeem he has redeemed us because of what he's done on the cross so he is preparing a place for his bride right and right now the spirit of god the holy spirit is working in our midst to prepare us as blameless to prepare us as pure to prepare us as faultless without without any blemish right to him so uh, we are a church that is being made ready so when the church is made made ready we are um, and you know as it speaks in revelation 22 17 we're calling out an expectation said even though spirit uh, come come so what is it that we have a takeaway from this is that we need to become um uh, what god wants us to be even when we are looking at marriage so as part of your preparation you know uh, tell yourself that you will work on yourself before before you get into marriage and you have the help of the holy spirit you ha have the help of the word and he is the one who is going to partner alongside you to make you a best bet a good person a best person for your spouse e even in this institution of marriage okay so when we look at um becoming the best you we're looking at different areas of it so we're looking at it collectively now think of it like a wheel okay now when you think of a a, a, a wheel you see that there are different um uh, slices or compartments of that wheel which are uh, separated by the spokes you know by those rods that you see on the wheel there are spokes that separates the entire wheel now imagine if these spokes on the wheel <clears throat> operated only at let's say a 30 or a 40 percent okay all the spokes operated only at a 30 percent which means instead of having the full length of the spoke you have only half of it or you have only 30 percent of it what would happen the entire wheel will collapse right or if you have some spokes that are at 100 percent and some spokes that are at 20 30 percent the wheel will run but it's very, very unstable. It will wobble. It is, it's not going to have its life. So similarly, when we're looking at ourselves and becoming the best you, we look at us as ourselves as in different compartments or in different ways. So I either physically, how are we taking care of our physical bodies? How are we taking care of our emotions? What are the kind of reactions and responses that we give um, in, in emotional interactions? How are we socially? How do we connect with other people? Do we withdraw from other people? Do we are we friendly? Are we kind? Are we compassionate? Or are we aggressive? Or are we always in a in a bad mood? Right? How are we professionally? What are we doing in uh, intellectually? What is God? What the 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 kind of um, uh, abilities that God has given us? How are we using it 
for his kingdom? How are we using it for the benefit of others? So professionally or, or through our career. Financially, are we always in debt? Are we always short of money? Or uh, are we wise in the way that we deal with money? And of course, spiritually, what is our walk with God like? What is our relationship with God? How much of time do we invest in reading scripture? How much of time do we invest in uh, in praying, in, in getting together as a community of believers? So when you look at this entire thing, there is that look at it as a wheel and see that you know in every area of your life, uh, go back to assess to see if there are some areas that really require you to work on, to be prepared before you get into marriage. Because when we get into marriage half-baked or when we get into marriage when we are not equally ready, we are going to be throwing a lot of burden on the other individual, on the other, on, on your spouse. And, and as a result, there can be conflicts and issues that rise up. So the first part is becoming the best you. Um, is are there any questions? Uh, okay, I think that there is a question here by Sean. With what mindset should we enter marriage in? Okay, that's a good question, Sean. And I would want to bring that up to back to the group because I think a lot. Of that should we enter marriage in? So. I'd like some responses. <clears throat> yes? This is an interactive class, OK? So you, you can talk. A pure mindset. What would you mean by that when you say a pure mindset? What would it mean? Thank you, Rin. That was that's good. Uh, if you could elaborate. Uh, I would say that um, like when uh, like you have to have a pure mindset and where you where you I mean, Similar to like what you said, becoming the best you. So like you have like um, just just kept yourself for that person until it's the uh, right time, and then um, you have uh, tried to keep your heart pure by doing what's right. Okay, sorry, then I don't think I heard you well. Your audio wasn't very clear, but I think you said something like being the best you. Okay, so, all right. Okay, I think Shiv Kumar said an open mind to accept the person. So uh, I, I think I want to add over here. Uh, okay, thank you, Anthony. So Anthony said, with the mindset of Christ, you shall leave your mother and father and cleave to your wife, so you shall become one. Thank you so much. So when we marriage is is not for fun right marriage is something that god has taken extremely seriously so much so that he's actually uh, written so much about it there are so many scripture that talks about marriage that talks about uh, how we relate to to one another okay so um, as we said when marriage is to be seen as a divine covenant it's it's something that that is a promise that you take you keep till um, till death do you part. It's something that you you choose and you decide uh, to work on, no matter what your difficulties are. Because when God brings two people together, you know He knows best as as He's brought these two people together, and He's the one who gives the power and the ability to work for that. So we don't don't look at marriage flippantly, like maybe the world sees it. When it is inconvenient, you can walk out. When there is when there is hardship, you can walk out. When there are disagreements, you can walk out. Now, all, all of that uh, shows, uh, I think, an immature response. But a mature response is knowing that the person that you have uh, shared your vows with, where God has been the witness in your marriage, you decide that no matter what, you know, with the help of God, you will continue to live through that. And in the midst of it, to become one, to become unified, to become 
distinctly together so that uh, you know the purposes of god can be can be fulfilled okay so it, it's uh, i think someone's written i think jackin is written it is not for a social or parental pressure yes that's not the mindset i'm not getting married because my daddy and mummy asked me to or because there's no one to look after the business or because if i don't get married my sexual appetites are not going to be um uh, are not uh, are not going to be fulfilled those are those are not valid reasons for marriage uh, this is a coming together of two people for a godly purpose for something that god wants to see so we so we are to look at it just like the way god designed marriage to be to to be together to to work together to be one together till death do us part okay um uh, i think nina's written preparing for it in every way possible keeping in mind that it is compared to the union between christ and the church absolutely yeah so the fact that you know um uh, i thank you for bringing up that point for, for the, the fact that marriage is looked upon uh, as a relationship just like christ is to the church which means marriage uh, was meant to be something extremely uh, in god's heart it was out of god's heart that that it was it it came about okay thank you all right so let's move on to um, to the second to the second one it is the next one for preparation is your emotional health okay now this part um, of us the emotional part of us is what makes up a large part of our being so i'm sure in um, probably in your first year class you have looked at how man is a tri tripartite being where there is body where there is soul and where there is spirit right so the part of your emotions fall in the part of your soul your soul is that which actually expresses who you are so your soul is made made out of your mind your will and your emotions so all of what you are is expressed by your soul and one of the key aspects of that is your emotional health okay now when two people come together in marriage um it is always important uh, what are they bringing in they are not just bringing in their experiences or their upbringing but they are bringing they are also bringing in their attitudes their emotions their personalities into the marriage so when when there are two people in good emotional health or in healthy a very healthy emotional space there is definitely it is definitely going to pay off it is going to be a lot more easier and a lot more uh, then there's a lot more engaging and togetherness that happens so being in emotional good emotional health not only helps you but it helps your spouse it helps others around you your children and your family it helps others around you so remember that um often you know because in in even in the field of counseling we do see that people decide to get ma uh, married because they feel if they are married then this the sense of loneliness and this emotional trauma that they feel will be cured but marriage is not a cure for emotional problems okay or the the fact is that marriage will only blow up some of those weaknesses that there, that there are and so what and once that happens it can be very difficult for the relationship in itself so it is good to evaluate and identify be aware of your negative emotions or the space of uh, how what your attitudes are like right because before you enter marriage so that when you're entering into marriage you're not taking the burden of your emotional difficulty onto uh, onto your partner onto your spouse okay so if you look at um page 12 and and that's in the book but i think it is uh, in the ebook it is in um, page uh, page 12 yeah that's also on page 12 okay so on the ebook it's in page 12 and there are a list of i think around um uh 17 um 17 odd unhealthy emotions and behaviors that have been listed okay and i'm just going to read out these 
give you all some time to really um, evaluate and find out where you all are in, in these spaces. Now, remember, we each of us may have some areas of difficulty or some areas of weakness, and, and that is OK. It's, it's good to own up. It's good to identify and recognize that we are there, rather than denying or blaming or justifying that we are like this because of something else, right? It is important for us to um, to know that our emotions will not just impact us, but it impacts others. So let me just read out you know, some of these emotions. If you have your books, you can follow through. There is outbursts of anger. There is depressive and emotionally vacillating um, a, a demeanor, as opposed to being joyful. Uh, unable to handle stressful situations, being critical and judgmental, having negativity and pessimism, uh, guilt and shame, being insecure, inadequate, and having a, a sense of lack of self-worth or self-esteem, being emotionally dependent on other individuals or on parents, being self-centered and uh, 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 and not being willing to um, take on the ideas of others or uh, or uh, you know respect the ideas of others jealousy pride being controlling demanding uh, assertive always wanting to have your own way being manipulative or cunning unforgiving and calculative being selfish or stingy being deceptive or secret secretive being suspicious or untrusting. OK, so these are some of the uh, negative emotions that we've just kind of highlighted for us to be aware. It's it's always important that um, we are aware of this. Uh, some some additional ones could also be being very sensitive to criticism or being extremely sensitive to some kind of feedback. Right. So what do we see? Uh, our emotions are, you know, our emotions are just not something that comes up and then it dies down. Like it's not, it, it's it, think of a, uh, think of a sea with a wave, with a high tide wave. What does it do? It destroys things around, like a tsunami destroys things around. So similarly, our emotions affect our behaviors. It affects the way that we respond to others. It affects our actions. It affects our uh, some of our decisions. So, um, uh, you know, while, uh, while these probably are things that we recognize, we must learn how, first of all, to identify it and recognize it, learn how to manage it, learn how to regulate uh, our emotions, and also learn of how we could eliminate or work through some of these emotions. And um, and and as a, as a uh, and instead of that, being able to walk in in a place of strong, healthy emotions, being in, in a place of of walking in right emotions. Now, th this is not that will take place in a day or two, especially since. You know, you've been carrying some kind of a negative emotion or a behavior or a negative thought process over very many years. It takes um, it takes patience. It takes uh, just a yielding, yielding of your own emotions to God and asking for help. Uh, you know, uh, through every moment, through every situation, to deal with this. Okay, so. Uh, we we also need to know that these emotional problems or emotional situations do not just occur just like that, but it can sometimes have uh, some background. It can it can come from some problems in the past that has not been addressed. You know, certain situations that has caused this, which is which uh, does not get addressed. Like for example, when there's insecurity or when there's inadequacy that leads to a suspicious behavior of the spouse, right? Maybe there's been some issues of low self-esteem. So every time maybe the spouse goes out or is in conversation with somebody, uh, there is a sense of uh, extreme suspicious behavior. So all of that, it can stem from some emotional problems, which is something that requires healing.
okay so these emotional issues are something that needs to be needs to be uh, assessed so uh, but we're going to be looking at some part of this in chapter 5 where we're going to be looking at attitudes behavior and temperament and how to develop more christ like attitudes a more a temperament that is controlled by the spirit and a behavior that is um, that is led by the word okay so that's what we we would we would like to do okay now even as uh, um we 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 work through the this part of emotions remember that um uh, generally uh, the way that uh, that two people may may respond to a certain situation can be very very different and it is a way to understand and grow and respect uh, each each other even as they move forward so learning how to support and understand and react in a way that is helpful for your marriage is something that really works well okay so that's at uh, the second one so um, uh, dealing with your emotional health. Is there any question here before we move to the third point? Any question? <clears throat> okay. All right. Then we'll move on to the third point, which is personal management. Okay. Now, personal management. Um, uh, it's important to know that you know you're not just you, when you're entering into marriage you are entering in with all of that you are right uh, so as as scripture says uh, let's just look at proverbs 25 28 it says whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls so um, what what does personal management really entail personal man manage personal management is basically checking to see whether the different aspects of your life is in place or is in order you know being able to manage your own life and your own responsibilities um, are important skills that we need to develop okay and some of them that we have uh, kind of focused on are just four they they're uh, and, and it is a comprehensive list of one, your personal responsibility of your own career, your finances, your time, and your ability to manage your household. Okay, so there are four areas of your career, your, your finances, your time, and your skills of how you manage your household, because each of us have to need to be responsible for things that concern us okay so let's look at uh, each one in detail so when we look at career the question that we often need to check back is to see that with whatever i'm doing is there some purpose um, in what i'm doing do i have have i been able to work on something that i know is god's purpose for me so that could be in some way a job or a profession that you are involved in. So looking back to see whether you are fulfilling the responsibility of holding a job or keeping to a profession and thus being able to provide for your larger family. Okay? So that's, that's the, probably the first thing that you that for marriage there may be certain questions that uh, that is important to understand is just getting into marriage would that be a time that you may be changing here when you're just married because the initial times and months and maybe the first year is something that really builds connection together so to be able to discuss some of these things and um, because there shouldn't be any surprises later right that after marriage you, uh, you tell your spouse that you know you, 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 you've got a offsite in a different country that would be unfair for the relationship right so it is important to to have any kind of an of, of what you see would happen as changes 
or uh, promotions or uh, uh, you know even even um, uh, even maybe maybe you you want to do a business of your own in the next one year these are things that that is important for you to understand and know and prepare not just yourself but the person you are going to get married to so that they will understand okay also certain guidelines that you look for when when you're looking at the specific option of career is you know in the last 2 3 years a lot of people work from home which means there is no space between home and work uh, the home is an office and so people get up get into work uh, you know get just come to the dinner table for meals and then then go to bed so and as a result of which that can be detrimental to the to the family so setting some guidelines to to see how that can be worked at so if that's a change that you need to make that's something that you need to look deeply into also a guideline guidelines for separation that is in case your work takes you uh, to relocate or to live live separately after your marriage um uh, there is a general recommendation that um you know as husband and wife you should not be living separately for more than um, maybe um you know for for a certain period of time maybe for a for beyond 3 months or at a stretch because that in itself uh, impacts the the connection the the relationship and it can it can lead to certain other uh, other issues like affairs or um or uh, extramarital um friendships so it is it's a guideline to avoid being uh, away from each other um, immediately after marriage and to to keep together to add to the focus on the marriage okay so that's the first part of career the second part is on finances so when we look at finances uh, we all have i different we may have different ideas about finances depending on what we saw growing up okay so it is it is good to know and evaluate for yourself how one what is your idea and your thoughts about finances about money okay um what do you do with the money with the income that you get how do you manage your income is it do you see that your expenses usually go way your expenditure is usually way above your income uh you know what how how are you able to work within the means of your of your finances again with the money that you have um how how are you committed in honoring god with your finances and being faithful in giving offerings or tithes to to the church okay so that's again another thing that you will need to look at also um what are your financial goals going ahead or what would you what what is the kind of living that you would like to make what are uh, some of your plans that you may have maybe it's a 5 year or a 10 year plan what are the ways that you have learned to save or invest um what are the things that you are actually doing that helps you to build uh, and invest something for your marriage and for your future okay uh, uh, apart from this also what is your attitude towards money often you know people <clears throat> are in this attitude of um, uh, this this is my money and your money and so when it comes to uh, even finances there should be a more uh, a, a should be a more single unified approach in dealing with money so that there is transparency in sharing these financial details and sharing the responsibilities around the home so these are some things and additional also debt what is your attitude towards debt debt um uh, you know so so that there, there are there, there could be people who are okay to take debts at all times right or for those or there may be others who who completely do not take loans or thing and they live within that means so it is always recommended that you know before before marriage uh, the um, you know debts are generally cleared off or if if that isn't a possibility then to be transparent of the fact that there are debts 
uh, that that need, need to be cleared off even after marriage because often we see that debts uh, can affect uh, personal relationships um, and uh, you know it, it could affect uh, the the entire marriage in itself so the so uh, finances in itself is something that we need to look at. The next is time management. When we look at time management, it's um, to have a clear evaluation and insight into the way you yourself manage your time. Um, uh, what are your schedules like? Wh how, how do you, how do you um, uh, lead your schedules uh, on, a, on a daily basis or on a, on a monthly basis or an annual, annual basis? So you keep to, keep to understanding what do you do to invest what do you how do you spend your time you know right from the time you wake up in the morning till the, till the time you sleep what kind how much um, how industrious are you how much of time goes in maybe daydreaming or how much of time goes in doing things that really have add no value also looking at how much of time do you really spend for your spiritual growth, for your spiritual maturity, to be able to come to a place to uh, uh, see and understand if you're consistently maintaining that time for the Lord, right? Also looking at how uh, how how punctual you may be and whether you're able to um, uh, fix time, plot out your time in such a way that you respect others and respect the way that you keep certain commitments okay also in time it ma matters of how you balance all your work you balance um your family you balance ministry other kind of hobbies that you're doing and being able to work through <coughs> different kinds of um uh, aspects that you are involved in so time management again becomes a huge um, sometimes can become a huge area of conflict because of the way how two different people work so so this is a, again another place of evaluation and the last one is household skills how do you develop certain skills to maintain your home and and here let me let me bring this out that skills are needed for both the man and the woman right to take care of a home and family household skills doesn't just mean it's for one person to do it, um, but for both to jointly hold the responsibility of working at a home. Because there are so many things that need to be done, especially now, because both the husband and the wife work professionally. It would be unfair to ensure that just one person uh, sticks to doing the household chores, but have um, both people work together in working through these areas. Okay. Now, it's, it's a good thing to... Um, to start preparing like for example if you don't know how to cook or if you've never washed clothes before or if you've never taken up a mop or a or a or a, or a broom it's time that you probably began to learn those skills because it is always useful for you as well as in your marriage okay so we've come to uh, three areas i'll i'll just stop in case we have some questions i think there is a there is a comment, I think, okay, from Nina. She's written, while we take time to prepare emotionally, we would still need to be prepared for things that might crop up in the areas mentioned. And so we will need to be dependent on God to be able to handle, sort out differences and keep things going the right way to honor God. Thank you. Yes, yeah, that's true. Right, any, other, any questions? Any questions before I start on the fourth point? Um, I'd like to maybe have some continuum. So we have around five minutes and leave it open for questions or for some comments. <clears throat> no questions? Or no comments? It's, it's a good time to just reflect uh, maybe on the first three points and probably uh, maybe what, what really made sense to you, what stood out for you that you could. No, I was just thinking that while I was getting married, I didn't have these sessions. Oh. And 
you know, just going through these sessions, like I'm just thinking like how much I could have avoided. And now it's a good thing that I can prepare for, I can pray and prepare for my daughter and nieces, nephews and all those things. The co this course is going to be really beneficial for me. Thanking mm. God. This one, one point of, you know, just, I know I'm just thinking that, you know, God has just held my marriage. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. nothing. And when I go through these things, maybe like 10% of what I'm learning now at 42 years is what I would have known when I got married. But so thankful mm -hmm. to God for this course at this point in time. It's really a lot of things. And God is the one who does things this way. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline, for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, so Rin said regarding the household skills. It's something that I did not know that both should work and share together. Okay, wonderful. Then, yes, it, it's a responsibility of all of us to be industrious and, and make use of what, uh, what we have. It's a responsibility of the husband as well as the wife. Yeah, there may be certain skills one person may be more stronger in, um, uh, and, and that's okay, uh, but yet to, to encourage your spouse to get useful in the house uh, and do things uh, makes it, it's, a, it's great meaning because it, it also communicates um, responsibility. It communicates that the space that you're living in is your own, right? So it's a good thing. So men, women on this call, it's your responsibility to take care of your own home. Okay, Ren also said, I also like that we should see from each other's perspectives and look for the welfare of each other. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So, um, the next couple next point is about uh, relationship skills now even when we go through this um we are going to be expanding some of this in the chapters to come okay uh, and uh, here we're just we're just looking at an overall framework but uh, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, these these specific relationship skills um in length in the chapters to come so but this is just an overview um, but if you've gone through the general notes you will find that uh, each of these points have been expanded later and we will get into the depth of that okay all right uh, shall we break i know we're two minutes early but it's okay let's break for a 10 minute break we will come back at 10 58 and on my clock it's 10 48 right now Let's come back at 10.58 after a break. <laughs> 